everybody, welcome to the Waldock Way. I'm Jessica, and today's video is going to be all about our morning basket for the seventh grade homeschool year. If you missed it and you're curious, I did actually share our seventh grade homeschool choices last week, so I will link that up here for you guys in case you wanna see what we're gonna be doing in addition to our morning basket. First, I would like to say, if you have younger kids, this is probably not what your morning time is gonna look like. When Emily was younger, we did themed baskets, and they worked so, so well for elementary school years. Like, they were my favorite. We changed them out monthly because her attention span was a little bit shorter. Um, so if you have younger kids, if you're looking for something for maybe that or themed, I will leave some links in the description and I will link our past baskets up here. Now, last year as we came into middle school, I tried something different. I set up a basket that was things that I would like to see us do that I felt like either kind of fell through the cracks or we weren't getting done elsewhere or were just like, enriching things um and that we would chip away all year long so our basket stayed the same the entire year it was the first time that's ever happened um, and it worked really really well especially now that emily's older her attention span is a little bit longer um and because we don't have as much time for our morning time so when we were um, doing theme baskets and when I was younger, typically we would spend about 45 minutes, maybe an hour during morning time. Now we spend closer to 15 to 20 minutes. Um, we just needed it abbreviated a little. So I wanted to like be able to hit a lot of things and then have like a big bang for their buck. So we were getting a lot done in a little bit of time. So with that being said, this is what I'm going to include this year. The first couple of things that I have are things that we will do, um, every day and then I have some things that we will kind of like rotate through and probably do about once a week so the first thing that I have that we will be doing every day are these growth mindset affirmation cards um I think it's a deck of 52 I plan to keep the same one for an entire week so like this one is a strive for progress not perfection what I like about these though is there's questions on the back that have to do with that affirmation. So this one, for example, is what are three things I did this week that will bring me closer to where I wanna be in five years? What are three ways I've changed since this time last year? And do I ever struggle with perfectionism? How do I overcome this? If you missed um, the curriculum video, you wouldn't have heard me say that this year, kind of the thing that I really wanna focus on is connection and um, conversations and having those meaningful moments with Emily and I thought this would be a really great way to do that because we could do the affirmations together and then we could both kind of answer our version of the questions which I mean these is gonna be just as good for me as it is for her um, let's see I am proud of myself for being a hard worker the questions on the back are what's something I've worked really hard to achieve this week how did this make me feel what helps me stay motivated to work hard what are the daily habits that keep me on track do I ever procrastinate or avoid doing something because I know it will require a lot of hard work and what can I do to overcome this? Like, I just feel like those are going to be some really amazing conversations that we're going to be having. So I was excited about that. Um, the other thing that I have that we will do every day just for that big bang for our buck is the smart cards for seventh grade. I don't know if we'll do a whole card or if we'll just do a single question. We will kind of see how that rolls out, but I like that it means that we're going to be getting lot of different subjects we can you know kind of jump in and out it'll give me the ability to see what she's interested in what she's not interested in I mean, we may end up following rabbit trails based off of what the questions are that day um, so this is something I'm really excited about having in there um, let's see the other thing that we will be doing every day is this um, my year around the world last year we did the nature one um, this year we're gonna do the around the world one it's just like quick little global activities. Most of them are drawing, coloring, or doing a quick little writing. Um, she can typically do this while I'm reading from whatever I'm going to be reading from that day. So it's not like it's taking up more time because we're kind of double dutying at the time. Um, let's see. Another quick one that we will do every day is this day in history for kids. It's a thousand and one remarkable moments and fascinating facts. Each day has like three or four different things. Um, so we'll be traveling through time day by day. We did a similar book to this last year and really enjoyed it. So I thought it would be fun to add another one this year and see what else may have happened through history. 
Um, and then I'm still unsure about whether this is going to go in our morning time or not. Um, and I said that in the curriculum video. And it's our discovery decks. These will be happening during the year no matter what. I'm just not sure where they're fitting into our routine yet. Last year we did them, or Emily watched the videos while she ate breakfast. This year I was thinking it would be fun to watch the videos together. And so then we could discuss them and see if it led down any rabbit trails, which is one of my favorite parts of homeschooling. Um, I'm just not sure yet. I, with us wanting to keep it shorter, um, I don't know if adding a video is a great thing. Most of them are under 10 minutes. All of them are under 10 minutes. Most are even under five. So it could work. Um, and that's where we're going to try it and we'll see. I'll let you guys know where they end up at, but the discovery decks would make a great addition to morning basket or morning time. If you have the extra five to 10 minutes, because there's so many different topics and they lend themselves to rabbit trails. And so that's where I would like them. But like I said, we'll see. And then I have three other things that um, I'm not sure there's quite enough to do every day for a year. So I think I'm actually going to just like loop through them. Um, one is the almanac for kids. Emily got this for Christmas. Um, it's the 2024 version. We will probably just read like a spread at a time. Um, I love that there's so many different topics from um, exploration to uh, culture to science and technology, wonders of nature, history, geography. So it would give us a really good kind of, again, way to touch on a bunch of different topics, go down rabbit trails, see what interests Emily, um, and that it's current because it's 2024. And then I thought about if we did get through this by the end of the year, as in December, um, I could always pick up the 2025 version to keep going. So right now I'm thinking I'm going to loop through, but that is one that could potentially become every day. Um, let's see for art, these spot, the differences books have come in and out of our life a hundred times. I thought they would be really fun to bring back. We have four of them. Um, basically it gives you a famous masterpiece and this is the correct one. This is one that's different and you have to study them to figure out what's different down in the corner or down on the bottom. It shows you, um, how many, like you could check it if you wanted, but how many different um, changes there are. And what I also love about it is that it tells you about like there's little synopsises, little fact um, tidbits all around that tell you about it. And you're literally having to study the artwork to find the differences. So it's just kind of a fun, easy way um, to get in some art study without it being like cumbersome, I guess. So this is what we're going to do. There's 25 in each book. So between all four, we have a hundred different masterpieces. Like I said, I'm going to loop through these though, instead of doing them every day, because Emily almost always wants to do more than one. Like typically she wants to do at least two. So if I loop and do it like every two to three days, it means they'll probably last us the whole year. And then the same thing with this, these word teasers, these are SAT vocabulary cards. I'm not sure how many is in here, but I don't think it's enough for the whole year. I think it's probably only about a hundred. So same thing, um, maybe a little more, but this is what one looks like. So on the front, it has a question about that word. So for example, is it disingenuous to invite someone you don't like to a party? Why or why not? And then on the back, it has the vocabulary word, the pronunciation, um, the definition, and then other related words to it. So just thought it would be a fun way to expose her to maybe some SAT vocabulary words. And then again, we would have that discussion, those conversations, maybe a rabbit trail because there's a question associated with it. Um, and then the last thing during our morning time, which by the way, doesn't even happen in the morning anymore, but I will explain that in a minute is, um, read alouds this year, last year for read alouds. Most of what I did was life skills. We did a lot of health, um, life skills for tweens, money, um, middle school success, that kind of thing. This year, I wanted to work on uh, personal development, um, mindset, that kind of thing. So I chose books that, that would kind of work with that. Um, one is Winning the War in Your Mind for Teens, Change Your Thinking, Change Your Life. Raising a Screen Smart Kid. Um, this is Embracing the Good and Avoiding the Bad in the Digital Age. 
how to influence people and win friends. Um, what I really, really liked about this one is it is an essential guide for a new generation of empowered, savvy, and confident young women. Eat that frog. She saw this book and she's like, I'm not eating any frogs. It actually made me laugh. Um, 21 ways to stop procrastination and get more done in less time. Just as you are. Uh, a teen's guide to self-acceptance and lasting self-esteem. It says find your inner confidence and discover what really matters to you. And then the last one is seven highly effective habits of teens. Um, the international bestseller and it's the ultimate teenage success guide. It's basically like a roadmap, um, step-by-step -step guide to help get you from where you are now to where you want to be in your future. Um, I have not read any of these. I read enough reviews to know that I wanted to read these and I'm actually excited for some of them because I think much like the growth mindset, um, affirmation cards, they will be just as good for me as they will be for her. I am pretty sure that even though she does not want to eat said frog, that this is um, the one we're going to start with because I think both of us need it the most. <laughs> so I think that's where we're going to start. But my goal is to get through um, six of them, which is what I chose because I felt like that gave us, you know, a, like a month and a half to two months for each one. And if it went longer, that was okay. But I was hoping that, that gave us enough time to get through them at a slow enough rate that we were digesting the information and we could, you know, stop and talk about it and really put it into practice versus just reading through them. Um, that is what is going to be in our morning basket. Now let's talk about our morning basket. It does not happen in the morning anymore. Um, it typically happens during lunchtime now because that is what works. Um, our whole kind of routine of our day has shifted. We do still call it morning basket because we spent so many years calling it that. Um, I have heard a ton of people call it different things. They just call it basket time. Um, somebody told me the other day they call it couch time because that's where they do it. Another person told me they call it 11 Z's. Um, and they just have like, you know, tea and snacks when they do it. All of those are fantastic ideas. Lunch is just what works. Um, I have always found the best way to do our morning time is when Emily's hands are busy. Even when she was little, I had like a slew of things that would keep her busy while we were reading aloud. Food, now that she's a tween, is the best one. Um, there is never any griping about that. So I make her lunch. We sit down either at the table or on the couch. Um, and she eats. I start our morning time. And then when she's done eating, normally she will just grab um, whatever her like your journal is and she will work her way through that while I finish up because typically she's eating at least last year the way it worked out is like while I was doing all of like this type of stuff you know she was eating snacking whatever and then about the time she she was kind of done eating we were done with that so she could grab this and be working on this as I was reading aloud from what was last year, our life skills what was this year is going to be our personal development. So I'm hoping that that will still work this year like it did last year. Um, if you are interested in seeing our morning basket in action, I don't think I did one of those last year because it seemed kind of boring and monotonous as far as video goes. Like it's not nearly as fun looking as it was when she was younger. That doesn't mean it's not fun for us. Um, but if you're interested in seeing what it looks like and in real time, let me know down in the comments. And that is a video I will add to my schedule for you guys.